Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, I'll introduce you to the anatomical terms used to describe the tribosphenic molars, which are found in marsupials and placental mammals. By learning these key anatomical terms, you'll be able to read and comprehend the scientific literature on fossil mammals. The terminology is one that was developed by Henry Fairfield Osborne, who's, who's best known for uh, today for his naming uh, and describing of Tyrannosaurus rex. But he was much more interested in understanding the evolution of mammals. A year after he published his short paper on Tyrannosaurus rex, Osborne published a rather large monograph on the tribosphenic molars of mammals. Osborne called the evolution of the tribosphenic molar the most important anatomical innovation in mammalian history. Osborne realized that paleontologists studying mammals lacked a vocabulary to describe the various cusps on mammal teeth. And he set about naming the cusps in a way that could reflect their evolution through time. This terminology has been expanded over the years but provides an excellent way to communicate between scientists interested in studying fossil mammals. Don't expect your local dentist to know about these terms, but you can apply them to human teeth as well. We will cover just the basic cusp names in this lecture. This is the upper right jaw of an Eocene fossil mammal, Hyopsis midicius, from North America. The three molars are on the left side of this image with a single premolar, the fourth or last premolar, on the right side of the screen. Premolars tend to have fewer cusps and are often called bicuspid, meaning two cusps. Although this depends on the animal and some mammals have very molar-like premolars. The molars themselves exhibit four major cusps. On the cheek side of the tooth, or buncal side, are, are the pericone and metacone. The pericone is anterior to the metacone, or toward the front of the jaw. The protocone is often the largest cusp on the lingual, or tongue side, of the tooth, and is often paired with a hypocone, which is found on the posterior edge of the tooth. You can see in this species, the third molar actually lacks a hypocone. It features only a shelf on the back of the tooth called a cingulum. The lower molars are a little more complex. Here we have the lower right jaw of the primitive artiodactyl, Simpson nodius. Uh, note that the premolars are on the left side of the screen with both a third and fourth premolar. The molars are on the right-hand side of the screen, and they're quite a bit larger, and feature basins and more cusps. The anterior half of the molar, the names follow a similar pattern as the upper molars. The anterior lingual side cusp is called the periconid. The one posterior to this is called the metaconid. And the tall buncal side cusp is called the protoconid. Note that the names of the cusps end with conid rather than cone to denote that it is in the lower teeth. A number of cusp names ring the posterior basin, which are different than in the upper teeth. These going clockwise are the anticonid, hypoconolid, and hypoconid. You can see how in the last molar, the hypoconolid is rather large compared to the second or middle molar in this particular jaw. One way to orient an isolated molar tooth is to imagine the basin as a ski slope. And that as you ski down into this basin, it would open into the tongue side of the lower jaw can be divided into two parts. The trigonid, which uh, contains the periconid, metaconid, and protoconid, cus, and reflects a triangle in many mammals, and the talonid, which is the basin portion of the lower molar and contains the anticonid, hypoconolid, 
and the hypoconid. Take a look at the figure in the textbook with these anatomical terms, and be sure to memorize these terms for the cusps on the teeth of mammals with tribosphenic molars, which includes most living mammals. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjaminslashburger.org. Links are found in the description below.